Once your child starts walking, they've got the whole world at their fingertips. But unfortunately, that world can have a lot of hazards, too. I know. As soon as my kids started moving, they're putting everything in the mouth. It's like, they don't care if it's safe. They don't know. So we've invited Kim Dulick from the Consumer Product Safety Commission to talk to us about toy safety. Welcome to MommyCast. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. So, you know, I think in a toddler's world, everything's a toy. All things fair game. Everything. Yeah. That's right. I, we look at, uh, for instance, a dresser as a dresser, where a child may look at it as a stair step to get up to their favorite toy or product. When you're talking about what the Consumer Product Safety Commission does, you actually are the ones who set the standards, correct? That's right. The U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission is a federal government agency that sets standards and regulations for toys and children's products, in addition to other another 15,000 or so products that the agency regulates. So we have, we're a small agency with a big Big job, but ultimate, our ultimate goal is to keep children and families safe. You know, a lot of these toys are coming from foreign countries, in particular China. Right. How do you regulate internationally? Yeah. Well, the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission sets standards and regulations that all manufacturers and distributors and retailers must comply with. So regardless of where the toy is coming from, they must meet federal safety standards. And CPSC monitors that. We are at the, at the docks monitoring imports, uh, we're in stores, random sampling, and we're receiving calls and um, information from consumers, from moms and dads. We set the standards and um, toy manufacturers are required to comply with those standards. And if we find for some reason that they did not comply, then CPSC has the right to recall the product mm -hmm. and can le level a penalty against the company. I mean, what happens if, if you know, what I guess I, as a parent, how does it, how do, if it affects my child, what do we do? Uh, we want consumers to contact us, definitely. Uh -huh. We want to hear from consumers. If they're, if you believe you have a product that will pose some type of risk, unreasonable risk or injury to mm -hmm. your child, then you contact us. Let us know. Contact us and contact the company. And if the company finds out first, they're required by law to contact us within 24 hours to notify us whether there's been an incident or not. If they find a problem through testing, mm -hmm. then they're required to contact us. Interesting. And if we find a problem through our random sampling or from other agencies, then we work with the company to get that product off of store shelves and out of consumers' homes. Well, now, what about, what about the you know, paint and the plastics, and I mean, That's there's the so many about. chemicals involved in stuff. I mean, at what point are you to be concerned with the parent? Because you parent? can't tell that just by looking at it if the paint is dangerous. That's the job of the Consumer Product Safety Commission to set the standards for hazardous or potentially hazardous materials mm -hmm. in a product. Children should not be able to access hazardous materials. And so, I mean, like if you have a toy that is peeling, has some peeling paint or whatever. I mean, as a parent, you should be concerned. You don't want your child to ingest those anyway, right? If yeah. you have a toy that's peeling yeah. paint, that's something yeah. you want to pick up the phone and contact CPSC. Okay. Hey, well, I have, it, I, I I have this product. Away, right. right. I wouldn't think to call, but we should be calling. Yeah, to definitely okay. call. Mm -hmm. uh, you can reach us um, through our website. Mm -hmm. we're, we're on social media. Mm -hmm. We have a toll-free number. So you can reach the commission in all sorts of ways to, to, to file a complaint or just to ask a question. So if you have a child who likes to climb like on the dresser mm -hmm. and likes to explore and stuff, I mean, take us through the house and tell us some of the hazards that they could potentially get into in each room. Yeah. Well, with the dresser, uh, CPSC has a tip over prevention safety campaign that we recently launched mm -hmm. because we found that children use dressers and, and other household furniture as climbing instruments and the items have been tipping over onto the children. Mm -hmm. And so we, our campaign says, anchor your furniture. See, we always did that because we lived in California, it was because of earthquakes. Mm -hmm. right. You anchor oh. all of those things anyway because of earthquakes. But it is a good, that's a very good point is, you know, especially like bookshelves and that type of thing yeah. where they climb up. Yeah. And I, I learned firsthand uh, that the little girl that you may see on our tip over safety campaign poster is my daughter. Oh. I snapped a picture of her when I call her going to do the thing that I'm warning others. So oh. there she was like, yeah. believe me. Right. <laughs> so no. I know firsthand. What about the rest of the house, though? I mean, take us on a little virtual tour. Okay, so starting with the child's room and your playroom or family room, look at the toys in the toy box. Make sure none of those toys have been recalled. And you can do that by visiting CPSC's website. You look at the product. If it's been recalled, you call the telephone number, find out whether there's a refund, a repair, or replacement of that product. Okay. Or uh, you can just get rid of the product. I bet we'd be surprised how much stuff we have that we haven't checked. Or maybe Well, me. especially I'll if you have older children. I mean, you've got between Sam and... 
and John, you've got 15 years. I, mean, I know. A lot happens in 15 years. Well, you still exactly. have toys. Yeah. You know, and then, you know, if you have older children, keeping those away from the younger children. I mean, you know, because Legos are right. all the rage for those older kids, but, you know, those little Lego pieces are exactly well, the wrong size for toddlers. That's an important fact, um, that with, when you have older children and keeping the older children's toys away from younger children, it's very important because, just like we said, the, the small parts, uh, you don't want the child, children to mouth those small parts of the older, to, older child's toys. Mm -hmm. um, toys are age-labeled. When you look on the packaging, it may say, not for a child that's three or younger, un that's under three years old. Right. And that's because that toy has small parts and we know young children mouth everything they right. put everything in their mouths so toys that are not meant for them may have small parts and one way a parent can check to make sure that if they, th they have a product that they think may be a small part or something that they can go in a child's mouth then use a, a toilet paper roll uh -huh. drop the toy in if it goes down in there then it's too small for that a child under the age of three I think it's interesting though because you know you always think about okay lock the cabinet lock you know, put the poisons up high, and yet mom's purse is sitting on the floor and there's a bottle of aspirin in there or there's, you know, you know, cough drops or, you know, yeah. something that's just the right size to, to choke on. Or even yeah. or even grandma or grand, yeah. grandma when she comes yeah. over yeah, and yeah. she has the pill, the Monday through Friday pill container. Yeah. That's easy access for a child right. to come and get into. I know also, you know, like for instance, they, there's been a lot of talk about the recalls for curtain poles and that type of thing. But if you have an older home with older curtains, you know, maybe you haven't gotten that point and you need to be very careful about that mm -hmm. too. Yeah, absolutely. CPSC recommends that you go cordless. Mm -hmm. uh, cordless is the safest alternate, so safest option for you. If you have small children How do you at go home, cordless? with the little twisty things, there's a there's a tension on it, and you you tent, pull the tension, and then it goes up, or you pull it oh. down. Poinsettias are very poisonous, correct? Yeah, you want to keep poinsettias uh, uh, away from children. Don't let them. Mm -hmm. Just like with anything else, don't let them dig into the dirt or pull off the leaves. Just mm -hmm. maybe place them up out of reach. Yeah, but there are other household plants too that can be very poisonous. So you just have to be very careful about that. Why do we have them. household plants that are poisonous? What are we doing? Well. I mean, they're beautiful. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, uh, I don't you can know. just look them up. And you can go to cpsc.gov, uh -huh. or yeah. um, there's also poisonprevention.org where you okay. can find out more information. Right. Okay. And, you know, we say children act fast, and so do poisons when we talk about poison prevention, mm -hmm. but children just act fast in general. Yeah. Um, so we recommend parents get on your hands and knees and crawl around and get a child's uh, view of the house. And that's one mm -hmm. way to, you know, take a virtual tour of the house. Um, and when you think about other rooms, your kitchen and bath, uh, when we talk about poison prevention, you want to keep household medicines and chemicals locked up out and out of reach. 90% of unintentional poisons to young children under the age of five occur in the home. Hmm. So you want to think about that, not, not leaving your, your purse or uh, any with medicine open and around children. Lock medicines up and out of reach. Make sure you reseal the child-resistant cap every time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm all about the child-resistant caps. I can barely open them myself. Kim, thank you so much for coming to MommyCast today. This has been great information. Thank you for having me. And if you would like more information on this topic, you can go to MommyCast.com or CPSC.gov. And if you want to share your own cautionary tales, go to MommyCast's Facebook page. We have no problem with crying on MommyCast. Yeah. There yeah. is crying on MommyCast. <laughs> it's usually Paige. <laughs> For those who see the world as their playground, you need more than an ordinary diaper. It's why there's Pampers Cruisers. Its breakthrough super absorbency makes it two times drier, yet with less bulk, so you can move freely. It's the gear to play to the max. Pampers Cruisers, now with bonus diapers in every box.